start with uh, the two reciprocal functions, which are secant and cosecant. So let's start, we did cosine first, so let's do secant now. And actually I wanna write a little smaller. So secant one over cosine. All right, we know what the graph of cosine looks like, so I'm gonna really quickly draw that up, and then what we're gonna do is uh, reciprocate it, which is gonna be a visually tricky move, but we'll get through it. <clears throat> so I'm graphing one, uh, this is gonna be the graph of cosine right here. So we're gonna start at one, so. This won't be to scale. So we'll say that's two pi. And I say it's not to scale because this right here is very close to one because two pi is very close to six. And obviously vertically that's measured as one, but this is good enough. Cosine starts at one and ends at one. Got those two in. Negative one in the middle, x-intercept, x-intercept. This is something you do need to have memorized, which is another reason to write it out over and over and over again. All right, we're gonna graph, <clears throat> we're gonna take the reciprocal of this graph. And of course, we're reciprocating the y values. So what I'm gonna do up here, I'm gonna label, I'm not gonna really care about the x values, uh, but the y values definitely are important. So zero for that y value, and I'm intentionally just leaving the x value just blank. Um, you can fill them in if you want to, but they're not uh, terribly important for what we're going to do. there okay so these five y coordinates that I wrote up here we're going to reciprocate each of these reciprocal I'm also going to reciprocate a uh, half and you be a little more clear why we're doing that. So the half will occur, let's see, right about, I want to just keep it with green, half, half, negative, I'm um, just highlighting y values that are one half, and negative one half. All right, so we're gonna reciprocate all these. Now, to reciprocate, you just well, I would say write the reciprocal, but you basically write the number as uh, one over that number. So reciprocal of negative one is negative one. Reciprocal of one is one. Reciprocal of zero, uh-oh. We get undefined. Uh, now we'll do one half. Reciprocal of a half is two, and likewise negative a half Reciprocal is negative two. All right, so these are all of our reciprocal values. I'm just gonna write them in here. Minus one reciprocal is minus one. One half reciprocal is negative two. Now when we're graphing and we get undefined y value, what that generally means, you get a vertical um, asymptote. Uh, reciprocal one half is two and one. All right, so we're gonna go and basically re-graph our cosine function on top of the screen, except we're going to reciprocate all of our y values. And this is, visually, this is uh, strange. One of the things that happens visually is the x-intercepts are gonna become vertical asymptotes. So this is not what we call a continuous deformation. So what that means, if you wanna visualize it, you'd have to imagine a pair of scissors cutting and cutting uh, 
so this is not a smooth transformation. So we'll start, we'll actually start out with the uh, vertical asymptotes. So I'm gonna call this two pi right here. I'm drawing this out a little further. There's a little bit more to scale here. Okay, so we had our old y value was positive one. And actually, let me label the quarter points. All right, so I'm gonna write the original values with the black marker here. One, one, negative one, intercept, intercept. All right, we'll do blue for our new graph. So our old x-intercepts become vertical asymptotes. There we go. I'll just do my vertical asymptote in this color. So there we go, two vertical asymptotes. I've seen students use highlighters for asymptotes. Those work really nicely, except you can't erase them. Uh, erasable pe colored pencil works well too. All right, so we got our vertical asymptotes. I'm going to label the coordinates. So if we're careful about where we're going, this middle one is pi, and we got pi over two, three pi over two. And again, if you go in common denominator, if I wrote everything as pi over two, uh, it would be zero pi over two, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. And it's pretty clear how those are lined up. So I'm going to just get rid of this. So we'll, we'll leave fractions reduced. All right, next up, we're going to graph the other y values. So let's take the easiest ones. What's the reciprocal of 1? 1. Reciprocal of 1? 1. Reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So those three points stay where they are. Next up, we're going to look at the green points here. So what was a half is now going to become a two. What was negative a half will become negative two. So we used to have the point one half right about somewhere around here. That's not going to be there anymore. It's going to jump way up to two. So it's going to be right about there. Uh, the point that was used to be at negative two, so would have been there. We would have been making a curve that looks something like that. Jeez, that's bad. Something like that. So. Ooh. Being a little imprecise. That's where no. That's where one half is, so it'll turn into two right up there. So the next negative one half will probably occur right about here. So we'll turn that to a negative two. Oh, I know why I'm messing this up. All right, I strongly recommend you put a guiding, let's get a nice color. So I'm gonna graph the regular cosine function here. I'm gonna use it kind of like a guide <clears throat> instead of trying to just um, freestyle all of this. Now we can be a bit more accurate. All right, where's a half? Half should be, so I'm looking at that point y value of a half and moving it up to its reciprocal. Same thing, one half appears right about there. Two. So I'm just taking those, that point and that point and their reciprocal values. All right. Now we need to connect these with the smooth curve. The smooth curve will start here, starts at one, y value of one, and it's going to, instead of decrease to zero, the reciprocal increases, and we have to approach our asymptote, and we're forced to do so from above. 
And we have very similar situation happening on the right side. We start all the way on the right. Go up like that. And something similar happens at the bottom here. And so let's go ahead and make this look a little nicer. So I'm gonna make this a, ooh, you know, forget that pi over two. Let's get rid of that. I just wanna make this a dotted line because it's not part of the graph, but it helped us make the graph. There we go. All right, so that's our graph right there. We don't need to keep track of all these points, so let's just write down a summary. There's two pi. So I like to cut the interval into four pieces, or what I call the five important points. Now I'm actually gonna graph out the five points for cosine because I have those memorized. And then I'm gonna take the five points and invert them. So here we go. The old x-intercept turns into a vertical asymptote. And our graph looks like this. So I'm not keeping track of the y value of two points. So here's our final graph. And we gotta make sure we label. So we got our two pi labeled there, we can label pi, pi over two, and three pi over two. All right, so there's our secant graph right there. So we're going to do cosecant now, except we're gonna do a lot faster. So I'm not gonna spend so much time talking about reciprocals because we just did that very slowly for secant. So we're gonna graph sign and then reciprocate it. So same thing we've been doing. Draw a better line than that. It's not the easiest to draw on a glass screen. So I'm going to come through with a different color. Let's use that nice light blue. Ooh, I was about to draw cosine. The sine starts at zero, and so zero, zero in the middle, one, put one there, negative one there. I'm gonna draw a dotted line this time. All right, so there's our sine graph. So now all we have to do is come back and reciprocate it. And actually, I want to move this down a little bit. So sorry if you can't do this in your notes. Perfect. And do the rest in. I'll do the rest in blue. All right. So vertical asymptotes come from the old x-intercepts. This time there happens to be three x-intercepts because we start and end on an x-intercept in the standard period that we're graphing. You need to label your x-intercepts. These ones are nice, they're not fractions. And the points that stay where they are. I realize we're not, I, when I move the graph, we're not lined up on the grid anymore. But that's okay, we don't need to be super precise. We need to be precise about our values, but we don't need to be precise about lining up perfectly with the grid. All 
there we go. That's one period. Now, with either of these functions, uh, what would the if I kept going to the right, what I would get is another vertical asymptote like this, another vertical asymptote like that, like this, like that. So this can keep going indefinitely to the right, keep going to the left. Oh, that's not the eraser I want. All right, and we'll do one quick stylized version. And we're starting and ending vertical asymptotes. Now, it's, this is where I really recommend another color because you can't really draw a vertical asymptote on the Y axis. That's the best you can do with a single color. Definitely want to label it, especially if it's on the vertical uh, if the vertical asymptote's on the y-axis, because it's hard to read unless you're going to use uh, a different color. All right, so we get three vertical asymptotes, one minus one, and then like that, and like that. All right. So we got secant, cosecant, and now we're ready to do a problem where we have some transformations going on. So we're only gonna do one example uh, problem here. And what we're gonna do is basically spend all of our transform, all of our time uh, applying the transforms to the reciprocal function. equals negative two cosecant. Let's do pi over two x plus pi. Let's get crazy. Let's do pi over two x plus pi over four. All right. Step one, same thing as before. We have to, uh, we're graphing regular sine and cosine. I'm going to get that pi over two factored out. So I'm doing guess and check factoring. So I'm gonna check, I definitely get pi over two x plus pi over four. All right, so we got the right factoring. So I can write things like period, we need that. Whoa, two pi divided by pi over two. So we got our period phase shift, our horizontal. We're, we have plus a half, uh, but positive or plus a half actually means go to the right one half. Uh, and then the last thing we're gonna do, there's gonna be a vertical stretch by negative two. Um, actually, I wanna put a little space here because So these are all the, you always do horizontal first, and vertical at the end. There's only one vertical here. Before we do a vertical transformation, the one step we didn't have to do uh, before we have to do now, we have to uh, graph the reciprocal, or reciprocate. So that's the step <clears throat> before we do our vertical transformations, we've got to reciprocate the y values. Okay, one last algebra move I'm gonna make. I'm gonna write this as negative two times one over, so cosecant is one over sine. A lot of parentheses going on. All right, the reason I'm writing this out, what we're gonna do 
we're going to graph this function by itself with the horizontal transformations. Then we're going to reciprocate. And the last thing we're going to do is apply the negative 2. So first thing we're going to do is graph that. The second thing we're going to do is the reciprocal, so that. And the last thing we're going to do is apply the negative 2 vertical transformation. So it's a good time to, uh, for yourself, see if you can graph that sine function. You can hit pause uh, on the video and try to graph it out yourself. We already did the, oh, it's plus a half. We already did the factoring, wrote down the period and the phase shift. That's all, that's all for the sine function as well. So we're ready to graph this. We're going left one half. So I think that's a good amount to call one half. Uh, so there's positive a half, three halves, five halves. Is that where I stop? I think I need two more halves, seven halves. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm counting our period right here. Period is four, so we got seven halves plus an extra half going to the left. So there's our proper period laid out. So we're graphing the sine function. So we're starting at one, and now I can be very accurate with my y values, one and negative one, and we're doing this funky color. So let's keep that going. One, nope, that's cosine. Sine starts at zero. Is that zero? Zero in the middle. One minus one. All right. So there's our sine function. All right, with both horizontal transformations done. So that's done. Now let's switch colors. I'm going to reciprocate the y values next. So this is the step we did in both of the. Uh, in the other two graphs, we, we did this in this video. So I'm going to reciprocate this. You could reciprocate it right here on the graph, or you could redraw a second graph below. I'm going to redraw a second graph below. I think I need to shift to a smaller marker. One half. That's right, seven pi over two, that would not be right. Zeros are vertical asymptotes, all right. My cat's sitting right next to me and he's purring loudly because I think he's really into reciprocal graphs, so hopefully you can't hear him. Negative one, all right, and graph the reciprocal. Man, cannot draw straight. There we go. Okay, so that is the graph, the reciprocal graph, so that's one over sine of all the same stuff, and which of course is cosecant of that stuff. All right, last up, we're gonna do the uh, vertical transformation. So we just finished that. And last up, do a negative two vertical transformation. We'll jump back to the black marker for this. All right, I am purposely, if you look, I'm purposely lining up uh, x values here so that the graphs, uh, it's pretty easy to see the correspondence between the graphs. So we're doing vertical transformation. So my horizontal or my x values are gonna stay exactly the same. I'm gonna multiply my y values by negative two. So before I was at one, minus one, those are going to not just double, but also B 
become negative. Ooh, I'm gonna run out of room, I think. All right, kept it on the grid. So our vertical asymptotes, they're not gonna move. We gotta be careful with the y values because they're uh, basically all changing. So what was positive is become, gonna become negative. I'm trying to get both graphs on the screen at the same time. So I'm looking at this point right here. It, the y value becomes goes from positive one to negative two. Again, because I'm stretching by negative two, which means multiply y coordinates by negative two. So our y coordinate that was negative one is gonna be multiplied by negative two and make it positive two. And then the rest of the graph also gets turned upside down. So it's gonna look like that and like that. So it gets stretched out twice as much and flipped upside down. That's the negative is what causes the flip or the reflection. So those are uh, how to graph reciprocals. And up next, we're going to do tangent and cotangent.